and welcome back to the second episode here in Mumbai. If you didn't check out our first episode where we went to some very popular Muslim areas for a meat feast and sweet treats, but today we're going to focus on the Parsi people, people that migrated here from Persia a long time ago, known for their delicious food in their cafes. I can't wait to bring y'all along with me. For y'all who don't know, it's Max My Kind of Meats. Let's get it started. And we are here at the first place, Kiani. A place has been open since 1904. They're just getting their day started and we're here to get this Parsi food tour underway. They're most famous for the mutton kima, so we're gonna definitely get that. Maybe a few other things as well. Oh, wow. Now we got a little bit of a mini feast here, but first things first, you gotta start with your chai. This chai is a little bit different. It's a Irani chai. So instead of being a masala chai, this is actually gonna have a lot of just cardamom in it. And you can smell it right away. It's really nice. The cardamom comes, settles in your stomach. So it's a good first drink to have to ease your stomach into the day. A little milky, great tea flavor. All right, now first up, I'm gonna go for the mutton kima. Kima just means kind of like the ground texture it's gonna be. So you see, it looks like a little ground minced meat. A little bit finer though. Ton of spices in here. It's gonna have those Indian influenced spices, but with that Parsi cooking method. You see some clove in here. Nice oil. So what you do is you take your pun and you just get it in there, scoop it up. Gorgeous. Get after it. Freshly baked bread. Reminds me of just a home style chili without beans from back home. Great tomatoes coming from it. Give you a little bit of acid. Sweetness, perfect amount of oil. That ground texture just kind of melts in your mouth. Mm, really love that kima texture, a very, very mince grind, but then you get all the spices coming through there. So you get the clove, the cinnamon, the bay leaf, the tomatoes, the oiliness. I see why they're famous for that, for sure. And now we got the Kori toast, which is just a Parsi scrambled egg toast, but you see they're putting a lot of stuff with the scrambled eggs. They got the tomato, you got the already caramelized onion and cilantro. Beautiful creamy texture. You get all the flavor from the ingredients and a few spices coming through it. Got a little condiment of ketchup here. Ooh, a little sweet because the onions already are caramelized down so much. So this just has a huge natural sweetness to it. Add my little mutton kima. I don't know if that's in the rule book or not, but it should be. I think that's how I like this best. Mm. Now, before you finish off your chai, what you gotta do is you gotta get the fresh baked bread with a big old slab of butter through the middle of it. Even just a little bit of a dunk here. Mm. Can't ask for much more than that. Freshly baked bread, a lot of butter, and a beautiful morning tea. A true old school place, like walking back in time when you go in there, old school eats, old school interior, old school everything. But that's it for the first spot. Now we gotta go meet up with Akshaya, spot number two. This is again one of the fire temples, so you're not allowed, I mean, except the Parsis, uh, no one else is allowed inside the temples. Okay. Uh, you do find a lot of other Parsis and Iranians, like their communities in other parts of India. For one thing, they migrated all the way down here, right? So there still weren't as many Parsis, like in terms of population who were down here in the first place. But uh, today, I think people who get married to other castes in other communities from uh, in India, they're not really tallied as a part of the Parsi population anymore. So they're right. not Parsi anymore as soon as they get married to somebody else from a different caste. See, we're very close to the fort and we're in a little Parsi community right now, right? That's right, yes. Essentially, today they're defined by the kind of businesses they're in. Uh, the religion that they practice, uh, Zoroastrianism. If you see any of the boards out here on the streets, you'll probably notice it says Parsi in there. So that's their label, that's their tagline. Very interesting fact is uh, for the longest time, they didn't have a concept of last name. So when they finally uh, integrated into the way of life in India and they were sort of forced uh, to have a last name, it started being the kind of business that they're into. So essentially, if you're producing alcohol, if you're in the alcohol industry, then that means your name will be Max Daruwala. So Daru means alcohol, and uh, Wala is the person who does it. So... <laughs> I like that. Max Daruwala. It's got a ring to it. That's fascinating. 
If I'm going to drink something, it's going to be a kingfisher. Mm, me too. <laughs> uh, good morning. Milk, ghee, fresh cream, butter. I mean, what's not to love about those things? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, the theme with these Parsi places is this place has been open since 1916. You just walk in here, you feel the history. Look at these little seats right here. I think this is what they used to carry the milk in. They made a little seat out of it. So many sweets. As you just step back in time, you got all the black and white photos on the wall. This feels like the buildings have not aged at all. Excellent. What are we going to get today? Are we getting the sweets? Are we getting the coffee? Or... Uh, why not everything? <laughs> We've tried. <laughs> Okay, after much consideration, we got down to three desserts. So we're gonna go through them each at a time. We're gonna start with the malai here. Now, this isn't pure malai. You actually have the outside right here, which is the chenna. Chenna, yeah. Chenna, which is almost like a cheese curd. And then in the inside, the almost little yellowish center is gonna be the malai, which is gonna be more like a cream, right? That's right. Mm, super rich. It's very, very sugary. It's not the texture I was expecting at all. It really dissolves granular. Look at this. When you press down into it, you can just see the juices flow out of it. That's all that sugar syrup. Oh my goodness. And next up, we got something which I definitely cannot pronounce. Rasgulla. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Look at it. It's a huge ball. That's but again, right. <laughs> it's the uh, chennai, right? Yes. Which is again the cheese curd, but it looks almost like a massive kalab jamun. Yes, it's a version, yeah. That's a massive bite. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Mm. That is an interesting texture. That's really spongy. Acts like a sponge, absorbs that sugar That's syrup, right. and just explodes in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Jabri. Jabri. And so what it is, is they're taking that milk again. It's a sweetened condensed milk, right? That's right. Cooking it down low and slow, always stirring it until you start to get some milk proteins to form. And then some of it still doesn't form, so you get a nice sauce with it as well. Mm. I tell you, the one I had in Delhi had a little like pistachio on it and a little almond. Yes. So I really miss that like contrast and texture, but this is just phenomenal. <laughs> it's so good. It's not too sweet, this one. It's not too sweet. Mm. And so three desserts were not enough for us. We crushed those. So we got some kofi, like a traditional Indian ice cream, but it has some differences as well. It may look like ice cream, it may taste like it, but when you actually eat it, you'll notice some differences, right? Yeah, that's right. I got the plain, she's got the mango. We're gonna go in here. Mm. So it's much denser and creamier than ice cream because of the cooking method. Again, taking that sweet milk and cooking it low and slow, always stirring it. And then what they do is they quick freeze it. That's right. And yeah. so what you do is you get something that's very dense and very creamy. Yeah, I definitely want to try the mango. Oh, the mango flavor really comes through once it starts to melt. So it's perfect for this Indian heat. It is. Perfect for the Mumbai heat. I know this says plain, but it has a real caramel flavor. And that's due to the cooking process. Like I said, low and slow over that heat for hours and hours. So that way the sugar and the lactose will caramelize and give you that flavor. Oh, good. I love it. All right, third location, we're headed to Britannia, one of the most famous Parsi restaurants in all of Mumbai. It's supposed to be absolutely delicious. So we had to save the best for last. Let's get in here. Look at this. They're only open four hours every day. I mean, I bet it's about to get packed in here because they just opened up. Wow, look at this. Look at all the tables that are reserved. It must get yeah. really busy in here. Yes, it does. Where do you yeah. think? And would you like to sit up here? Oh, uh, yes. They really make it known, only cash. <laughs> <laughs> so they have their distinctive drinks here. They have a lemon, they have a cherry, I think it was, a ginger, and then like a vanilla ice cream. I went with the ginger because I was thinking to pair with the food that we're going to get pretty well. Same thing with all these parsley restaurants. They're just very old school, sticking to tradition. But when you come here, the service is amazing. Got some bow ties, very attentive, almost like Western or Europe service, the way he's here, he's giving you recommendations. It almost feels like it's more than just dining, it's an experience. Ooh, very refreshing. That is ginger. That yeah. is an old spicy ginger. Ooh, My hey, goodness. Ooh. Oh, it's so spicy. Would you like to try? Yeah, it is. Oh, that's actually really nice. Oh, that hits. It <laughs> hits hard. <laughs> That'll cleanse the palate. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
So how long has this place been open? Uh, it's been there since 1923. 1923? Yes. It feels exactly. older than that. Actually, when they started off and they set up this restaurant, they were mostly catering to a lot of British of, uh, officials who were stationed in this part of Mumbai. The uh, independents switched up their dishes a little bit, added a bit more masala in there. More masala, the more good. <laughs> This is the dish I've been wanting to try. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's beautiful. Okay, so we got the chicken berry pulao. But he was talking about the berries a little bit. They import them from Iran? Yes, that's right. And what type of berries are they? These are called bar berries. Okay, so we got sari bolti yeah. here. And they are generous with the fried potato yes. toppings. So sali means potato chips right over there. Oh yeah, they gave us enough. <laughs> yeah. And uh, boti is the mutton gravy that makes right over here. Uh, so the, the kind of spices that go into this is uh, sort of a Persian Indian mix. Okay, so when yeah. India became independent, they probably made it more by more Indian influence? Yes, that's oh, right. That's really neat. So it's going to be that boneless mutton in here with all those spices as well. Let's get these chapati distributed and dig in. Look at this, just super light and fluffy. Look at that gravy at the bottom coming out. There it is. Chunk of chicken there, just coated in that gravy. Very light. It really sticks to all that rice so much. Let's get a beautiful chunk of chicken here. Gorgeous, a little bit of everything. Berries, lots of rice, a little chicken. Besides the fact that the portion is about twice as big as my head, it's the perfect lunch meal. It's so light, it's so floral and aromatic. You get the sweetness from the berries that combines with the spices of that gravy. Fries those shallots to give it this decadency. It's just perfect harmony. Mm. Now we got the mutton and all those spices and a ton of those fried potatoes. You're not holding back on the fried potatoes. Now that is a dish I would come back for. That is absolutely my favorite. The heat kind of creeps up a little bit, but it's nothing too intense. Just the tomatoiness, the oiliness, the creaminess, the crunch from the fried potatoes, and then it just, oh, so decadent, mutton meat. Wow. That's special. That tastes like something your grandmother's making. The tomatoes, the bay leaf, the spices, the low and slow cook, pulling the flavor and letting it all come together. Wow. Like you said, you can't really be a part of the Parsi community unless you're really born into it. What leads to that? Is it just the pride in being a Parsi that leads to, you know, having places like this that are going on 100 years old soon? Or is it just something that was already ingrained in the culture? Uh, I think it was already ingrained in the culture. It's, uh, it's been a tradition for a very long time, I think. And the, uh, for one thing, I don't think they ever expected the fact that they were going to be in a whole different place. Think of their history, you know, they had to leave or they were going to be executed, so they had yes. to leave and come to India. So yes. they may be coming from the sense of like, we have to stick together and yeah. stay strong. The Parsi would probably know each other in, in the community. There, there are only a few people. That's like where I'm from too. <laughs> everybody knows everybody. <laughs> well, after hearing that, I feel like I'm definitely not going to get this recipe then since they're such strong traditionalists and keeping in the Parsi, but that's okay. I'll just come back here many times to eat this. Thank you so much, Alex Shaya, for taking us around and showing us this Parsi cuisine and talking to us about the history and culture and learning so much today. And as always, a big thank you to a chef's tour. They just have a newly open tour here in Mumbai. So if you want a true local experience like we had today, make sure to check them out. Y'all, it's a Maxima Kind of Beach. Catch you at the next video.